everyone, dear participants. On behalf of the experts in international trade at the Chamber of Commerce of Metropolitan Montreal, we welcome you to a webinar of the Desjardins International Meeting Series. And today's topic is the strategic advantage of doing business in Savannah. And also we will be seeing um, an overview of the port, uh, port of uh, Savannah. In, um, so my name is Dina Mansour and I am an advisor for international market development at the Chamber of Commerce of Metropolitan Montreal. And I am pleased to animate this webinar with you today. Our speakers today are Ms. Jesse Jenkins, Director of Research and Trade Development at the World Trade Center Savannah, as well as Mr. John Petrino, Director of Business Development and International Marketing at the Georgia Ports Authority. I would like to use this time to thank our partners, starting with the Economic Development Agency of Canada for the regions of Quebec for its ongoing support of the World Trade Center Montreal's activities, as well as our sponsor, Desjardins, who made this webinar series possible. So uh, to start, if you have any questions to our panelists today, you can write them in the designated Q&A box located on the bottom center of your screen, and uh, we will address them towards the end of the webinar. You will also receive a short survey that will pop up in your browser at the end, which we invite you to answer to gather your opinion on future events. I will also send you a follow-up email tomorrow, which will include the presentation used today. In addition, if you would like to watch this webinar again, we will make the recording available at, the, at our website, as well as on our YouTube page. So let me start by introducing our first speaker, Jesse Jenkins. So Ms. Jenkins joined the World Trade Center Savannah in 2017, and she currently serves as Director of Research and Trade Development, managing all research projects and facilitating trade efforts to attract investment and create jobs in the coastal of Georgia. She brings a diverse portfolio of experience to the organization with previous positions in social services, finance, and healthcare. Ms. Jenkins, you now have the floor. Good morning, and thank you, Dina. I am thrilled to be here to present Savannah to all of our new friends in Montreal and Quebec. So as Dina said, I am Jesse Jenkins. I am the Director of Research and Trade Development here. And part of my job is to build these relationships internationally. So I'm excited to be here and explain some of the strategic advantages of doing business in Savannah. So I hope at the end of the conversation, you see Savannah is not only a good place for your business to land, but you could also look at Savannah as the tip of the spear. And if you're looking at doing business in the United States at all, you can start in Savannah and trade outward through the Southeast United States. So Savannah is located along the Southeast coast of the United States. The state of Georgia is shaded on your screen in orange. If you consider the state of Georgia and picture it almost as a little mitten shape, we're right there on the thumb tip. We are happy to be located in the top state for doing business in the United States. So again, when you're considering a new location, I hope that you keep that in mind. So we're not here to start a brand new relationship, right? Um, Canada and the United States clearly have a very robust trading history. And not only do the Canada and the United States have a relationship that's already existing and very strong, Canada and Georgia also have a very strong relationship. In fact, Canada is Georgia's number one export market. In terms of exports that we're currently selling into Canada, top exports include vehicles and aircraft, carpets and tractors. The amount of those exports comes to almost $6 billion. And in terms of trade from Canada into Georgia, we are sending or we're receiving aircraft and turbojets, ethylene polymers, wood, and some delicious treats like bread and waffles. So trade from Canada into the state of Georgia is around $5 billion. In terms of foreign direct investment, Canada is the number two source of FDI in the United States. In terms of a kind of diplomatic and trade presence in the state of Georgia, um, Georgia is home to the Quebec government office in the city of Atlanta. So the Quebec government office works to just facilitate those trade and investment opportunities 
And although they are located in the city of Atlanta within the state of Georgia, they cover 11 southeastern states. We'll drop a link to their website in the chat box for participants if you want to read a little bit more about how that government office can help. Additionally, the state of Georgia has been home to the um, Consul General for the country of Canada since um, 1973. So the consulate and Savannah are close. Um, in fact, I have a beautiful mask that the Consul General sent to us. This has a design from a wonderful um, Indigenous Canadian artist on it, and I wear it proudly. In terms of students, we are at any given time hosting around 665 Canadian students in the country or in the state of Georgia. Um, of course, that may be different during COVID times, but during typical years, we have several hundred Canadian students here. Um, Trade and Investment with Canada is responsible for 330,000 jobs in the state of Georgia, so our relationship is very important. When you consider the trade of goods and services between Canada and the United States, it is around 1.4 million US dollars every minute. So when you look at the 60 hour or 60 minute program that we're about to embark on, at the end of this program, there will have been 84 million US dollars in trade between Canada and the United States, which is pretty amazing. So I think it's important to understand kind of the organizational map, right? So World Trade Center Savannah is just one piece of a much larger economic development engine. So World Trade Center Savannah is actually owned by the Savannah Economic Development Authority. So we call them CEDA, S-E-D-A for short. CEDA exists just like any other county level economic development agency. The goal is every single day to create jobs and attract investment. So CEDA kind of looked at their strategic goals and they said, we should probably devote a little more budget and a little more resource into a few different lanes of opportunities. So one of those opportunities was international business. They had not really devoted a team to international lead development until 2011 when we launched World Trade Center Savannah. So we operate literally exactly like CEDA. We exist to create jobs and attract investment. However, we want our companies regionally to grow internationally and we want to help attract that foreign direct investment. All right, also the Savannah Economic Development Authority noted that entrepreneurship and tech innovation were not necessarily being nurtured. So we chose to launch the Creative Coast and the Creative Coast is this wonderful entrepreneurial ecosystem. They have their own, their own standalone building where they have a physical co-working space where these entrepreneurs can work together and help build their products for market. Additionally, um, film is bursting at the seams in the state of Georgia. So the Savannah Economic Development Authority chose to launch Film Savannah or our Savannah Regional Film Commission. They operate just like CETA, just like World Trade Center and just like the Creative Coast. They want to create jobs and attract investment, but they're working specifically in the field of entertainment production. So I think it's understand, un important also to understand kind of the framework under which we operate. So we understand that investment follows trade. So a lot of what we do lives down here in this kind of blue stripe that's on your screen. So we do a lot of introductions and missions. We try to build those relationships because once we have a firm foundation of knowledge and education and relationships, that turns into trade. And when there's more trade going back and forth, Typically that ends in you know, increased jobs and increased revenue. Once the trade is at a point where it you know, requires some attention, we are celebrating, we're breaking records, then that lends itself to further expansion location decisions. And when people can expand and they can relocate and they can open new branches and things of that nature, that's economic growth and opportunities for both parties on both sides of the deal. So if you look at the economy of Savannah and kind of break it down into these pillars, um, I think it's important to note that some of the pillars of our economy 
are going to be kind of aspirational. So these may be avenues where it's just fertile for growth and investment and opportunity. And then there's other pillars of our economy that are decades, centuries old, like the ports. So I'm gonna pause on this slide for a few moments and I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about each of the pillars of our economy. Um, I will note though that I'm not going to go steal the show because we are fortunate enough to have the chairman of the board of World Trade Center Spana, also the director of business development for Georgia Ports Authority on the line with us today. And he will go into a much deeper dive on the competencies of the port. So to begin with, we'll look at manufacturing. I think that manufacturing and port logistics are probably the hallmarks of Savannah's economy. So when you look at manufacturing, um, we are home to 287 firms that employ 18,000 employees in and around Savannah. So a huge piece of our economy. When you look at manufacturing as a function of our GDP, our gross domestic product, it's about 21%. And in terms of output, annually manufacturing puts out around 4.7 billion US dollars. We are um, the fastest growing industrial market in the United States. So this is a great time to uh, get in at the ground floor here in Savannah. And in terms of kind of that manufacturing and how that lends itself to the Canada US relationship, you'll notice that a lot of our top Canadian exports are coming from Savannah. So they're based in the kind of our strongest parts of our manufacturing economy, things like aircraft, tractors, and vehicle parts. And if we flip over to the side a little bit here, we'll talk about entertainment production. So as I mentioned, CETA invested in the Film Savannah Regional Film Commission, um, and they exist just to attract those entertainment productions in and around Savannah. So in terms of direct spend, in 2019, we celebrated over $125 million in direct spend in Savannah alone due to film production. We've been voted the number one city to live and work as a filmmaker, and that's due in large part to our competitive cost of living. So when you think about other cities in the country where film production is huge, like something like Los Angeles, the cost of living in Los Angeles compared to Savannah, Savannah is about 40% lower. So that makes it a very compelling place to live and work as a filmmaker. In 2019, we had 185 production films here in Savannah. And it's important also to note that Savannah as a set and a site location is very diverse. We have parts of our region that could be filmed as, you know, Europe. We have the cobblestone streets and the beautiful Georgian architecture. We also have the coast. So we could be Florida or we could be, you know, a beach in Southeast Asia. We could, our sets and our location is just very diverse and with the right kind of artistry and vision, you could film nearly any location here in Savannah. And then in terms of port logistics, again, I will not steal the show. We have John here to take a much deeper dive, but a few kind of key points that I always like to mention is that the port is a very large major port part of our economy. Um, but the port really feeds this thriving distribution center network. So we're gonna have distribution centers for names that you'd absolutely recognize like, like Ikea or Target, Home Depot, things of that nature. And I love to mention that thanks to our port and our great infrastructure, you can reach 70% of the United States within two days or 48 hours. And in terms of this academic military government function of our economy, we kind of put those all together in the same kind of category because they're so closely intertwined. So we are home to two military bases. And those military bases really feed that academic and military and our government um, function of the economy as well. So the military impact in Savannah is around four and a half billion US dollars each year. We're also home to 18 colleges and universities. And when you consider academic and military and government as a function of our workforce, around 14% of our workforce is involved in this pillar. And again, as I mentioned, pre-COVID, we had around 600 Canadian students studying in the state of Georgia. So in terms of healthcare, um, Savannah is our regional hub. So we have two very well-established healthcare centers here in Savannah, and we have people traveling, you know, an hour and a half to two hours from their homes to Savannah to receive medical care. So when you look at healthcare as a function of our workforce, again, it's about 13%. So 
similar in numbers to the academic, military, and government part of our economy. We are lucky enough to have nine of the 100 top healthcare innovation companies in the state of Georgia. Of course, those aren't all in Savannah, but we have access to them because we play nice with everyone within our state. Um, and I think it's interesting also to note that healthcare technology really has evolved naturally in Savannah. And that's due to the fact that one of our major healthcare centers is privately owned. So here in Savannah is a homegrown, very robust, very advanced hospital system where the decision makers live and work. So they have a lot more flexibility in taking on those new and innovation, innovative treatments and procedures and tools. So um, due to that, healthcare technology has just really blossomed on its own. We haven't had to nurture that as much. However, I mean, it's grown on its own, it's natural, it's a really great testament to the fertile ecosystem that we have here for those kind of technology companies. Great segue into creative technology, right? So Savannah is considered the number one city for technology professionals to live and work. Similar to why we're the number one city for entertainment production, is that cost of living. Because again, if you look at some of the other places in and around the um, state of Georgia and the country of the United States, um, cost of living just doesn't compare. So when you look at something like coastal California or even New York that has a lot of film or even Atlanta in the state of Georgia that also will host a lot of film productions, our state or our cost of living is just, you can't compare to it. So. In addition to that, we have a great quality of life, which we'll get into in a moment. Um, for these creative and technical services, it's important to note that at any given time, we have around 7,000 students in technology majors. So, you know, in a short time, they'll be exiting their education and entering the workforce ready to work at your firms. And we actually launched a new incentive in May of this year. So we, um, will pay relocation expenses for a technology worker who gets to work remotely. So a lot of these tech jobs are done on a computer. That's very remote, especially in times of COVID. We discovered that lots of people were moving and taking advantage of that flexibility. So we wanted to be part of that migration. So for technology workers who can work remotely, we will pay relocation expenses if you decide to come and live and work in Savannah. So part of the strategy there is that we're trying to create this critical mass. We want a number of experienced tech workers living in Savannah so that eventually we have this really robust workforce that helps us attract more creative technology companies. And then in terms of tourism, so if you've been to Savannah, you love it. It's Beautiful, a very carefully preserved historic downtown. We have the coast, we have a very robust art scene. Um, and thanks to those things, we host around 14 and a half million visitors annually. Those visitors contribute to around $3 billion in direct spend in the city of Savannah. The city of Savannah has been voted wonderful things. Uh, it seems like we're winning a new award all the time. Um, we've been voted things like a can't miss city and the world's best city and friendliest cities. Um, it's important also to note that we have twice as many art galleries per capita than New York City, which is pretty amazing to think of a city of our size comparing to New York in that way. Um, another thing that lends itself to the tourism is our sunshine. So we have 214 average days of sunshine a year. So odds are, if you're in Savannah, you're going to have beautiful weather. And it's interesting to note that Canada is consistently Georgia's top international tourism market. And finally, in terms of agriculture. So in Savannah proper, agriculture is not a huge driver of the economy. However, when you look out into the region of Southeast Georgia, agriculture is much more important, much more large. So um, in terms of the things that are being produced in Southeast Georgia, we have chicken, eggs, timber, lumber, wood, um, beef, our major exports. The Port of Savannah, which John may touch on later, has actually been named the top port for agriculture and agri-food exports. And Canada is Georgia's number one agriculture export market, interestingly enough. And when you consider the bilateral trade between Canada and the state of Georgia, um, each year that's around $1 billion going back and forth in agriculture between Canada and Georgia. So 
So this slide is just a quick representation of some of the things happening in our economy, the port and the tourism and the manufacturing. Um, JCB, you'll see a logo on your screen. They're a heavy equipment company. Um, they are British owned. They re were recently awarded a seven year contract with the US military for several billion dollars. Um, they will be busy fulfilling that for the next several years. We're proud of them for that. And then on the bottom right, you'll see Kerry Foods. That's an Irish company. They do food products. Um, they recently announced an expansion and 100 new jobs. So even in times of COVID, business is good in Savannah. Things are growing and expanding. So while Savannah, right? So we'll pause here on this slide again. Enjoy the beautiful photos of the Savannah region um, on your screen. And I'll talk to you about each of these reasons why you should choose Savannah and what makes us so competitive. So we feel like we have a very competitive educational workforce system. So the workforce median age in Savannah is 36.1 years old. So that's mid-career, we're experienced, we are ready for new opportunities and looking for you know, the next step in our career. So that's an, ed, like, you know, an educated and advanced workforce um, in terms of the military. So we are having 350 of these military individuals exiting each month. So we call them our heroes for hire. These heroes for hire are well-trained. They have, you know, went through the military. They follow rules. A lot of them are trained in some technical services. So they're just ripe and ready to be plugged into a new opportunity. And of course, we have so many uh, colleges and universities. So we have a truly diverse spread of programs in and around Savannah. We're home to the Savannah College of Art and Design. We're home to Georgia Southern University, um, Savannah State University. Um, those are some just off the top of my head, but in total we have 18. And at any given time we have around 65,000 students studying. And of course the quality of life, um, similar to tourism, you just cannot beat Savannah. If you, like I said before, if you've been here, you love it. If you haven't been here, please email me. We will get you some deals and get you down here. So we're coastal. We have all of the beautiful, wonderful things that you can enjoy in a coastal environment available to us with a 20 minute drive to the ocean. We have a beautiful and carefully preserved historic downtown. We have around 25 degrees Celsius average temperature. So again, coupled with our average sunny days per year, it's more than likely you're gonna have great weather when you're in Savannah. If you love sports, we have a minor league baseball team called the Savannah Bananas. Savannah Bananas, yes, and they are so much fun. Their games are like a production. Um, we have the baseball, we have several golf courses to choose from. We have running events year round. There's boating, there's fishing, hunting, um, the specialty exercises like yoga or bar, we offer those all around town group fitness opportunities. So there's sports for everyone here. In terms of the arts, we have the Savannah Music Festival every spring. We have the Savannah Jazz Festival every fall. Um, we have the Savannah Philharmonic that does beautiful orchestral classical music. And um, we have a number of art galleries, two theaters, and several museums that are art museums and also cultural museums. And in terms of our culinary th foods um, in Savannah, it cannot be beat. We have a number of rooftop bars offering beautiful views and in times of COVID, right? We want to eat and dine outside if we're going to leave our homes to do so. Um, so the rooftop bars are an excellent option for that. We have Southern Fair, we have barbecue, we have a number of fine dining restaurants. We also have plenty of options for casual dining. We have specialty dining like vegan or vegetarian, and we also boast a very robust farmer's market each Saturday. In terms of incentives, I mean, quality of life is wonderful, right? But when we're making decisions, we're worried about those dollars and cents, so we can help you with that too. So we have a number of incentives. We can do corporate tax credits. We have quick start training. We have centers of innovation hosted by the state of Georgia. We have grant financing, some discretionary funding. We have a foreign trade zone in Savannah. And it's important to note that our incentives are customizable. They're across many levels. Um, it mostly depends on things like investment of money and um, number of jobs that you're committing to. But we can work on all of those things. Just know that there are options at you know, the city level and the county level and even further up at the state level. We all play really nicely together and we're a very pro-business state. 
we will work together with our partners at every level from local to state to federal to get what you need to be successful in and around Savannah. So if I pivot just a little bit, I think it's important to talk a little bit specifically about World Trade Center Savannah. So World Trade Center Savannah is one of those unique supports that we offer in the region. So um, another reason to do business here. So World Trade Center Savannah is part of the World Trade Centers Association, which is a group of over 300 World Trade Centers located in over 100 countries around the world. So by doing business with World Trade Center Savannah or World Trade Center Montreal, you are one call away from markets all around the globe. So it's just like a family network where you can call, you'll find a warm body to answer your questions and get what you need to expand your business and increase your opportunities. So World Trade Center Savannah is proud to be part of that network. Additionally, we are proud of our regional partnerships. So the Savannah Economic Development Authority, or CETA, who owns our license, has a hard border around Chatham County, which is where Savannah is located. We are lucky enough to not have that border. So we have some flexibility and we can partner with 16 other counties along the coast of the state of Georgia. And we also have 65 private business partners. So it's interesting to note that our region covers around 29,000 square kilometers and within our region is almost a 1 million person population. We're at 927,000. And again, if you look at this slide on your screen, you will see almost a menu of services. So these are the things that we say we can do to support our companies in the region. So, you know, we can do research, we do global education programs, we do networking, we host an internship program, we can do protocol research, we can plan your trade missions, we can help you host inbound delegations, all the things of that nature. And an interesting, um, just to pause here and explain these photos on your screen. So um, the top right, you'll see actually myself with the most recent Consul General of Canada, Ms. Nadia Theodore. That's us visiting the Port of Savannah on her first visit to Savannah. Um, to the left of that, you will see our previous board chair and president of our board, Scott Center, presenting one of our Canadian companies, DIRTT or DIRT, um, presenting them with our International Business of the Year Award in 2018. So they are a company out of Calgary. And at the bottom, we hosted a symposium in 2017 called Partners for Agriculture in North America. We were lucky enough to have Canada's Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food, Lawrence McCauley, join us for that symposium. So there's a literal world of opportunities out there, right? Um, we realized this and we as an organization chose to launch into a pretty extensive research project to help narrow our focus just a little bit. The caveat I will share here is that we play nice with everyone. We will work with any country around the world. Um, however, in terms of our proactive efforts, we named the six countries on your screen for our target countries efforts. So typically these target countries relationships are built with trade missions back and forth. Um, however, present day, we cannot do that. So we pivoted slightly and we are, oops. There it is, okay. So we have pivoted slightly and changed our strategy to develop our target countries relationships for 2020 in times of COVID. So the idea is that we're gonna grow and strengthen this network by doing virtual delegations, similar to what we're doing today. From these delegations, from these presentations and conversations, we hope that we'll develop shared projects. Maybe that's business to business networking. Maybe that's a virtual trade mission. Maybe that's just another introduction we need to have. And from that, we will grow and strengthen our network and potentially start the continuum again. Oops. Um, one of our target countries that we've had some success in is Ireland. So clearly I understand that I am talking to a group of businesses from Canada. So please let me explain. I think that um, it's interesting because I saw the Montreal flag has a clover symbolizing your Irish population. So um, interestingly enough, Savannah is very Irish as well. 
So um, in the 1840s, a Irish man named William Graves was this shipping merchant. He was shipping lumber from Quebec to Ireland. So his ships went from Ireland to Quebec, back and forth. So anyone in the maritime industry knows you want shipments going both ways, right? So during the Irish famine, they would take Irish emigrants out of Ireland on the ships to Quebec, pick up their timber, drop off the people, and then come back to Ireland and the United Kingdom with their timber. So interestingly enough, um, the industry just kept growing and the timber needed to continue going back and forth even during winter. So William Graves chose to diversify his uh, shipping lanes from just back and forth to Quebec to Savannah. So the exact same ships that took timber and immigrants from Ireland to Quebec also brought timber and immigrants from Ireland to Savannah. So as a person of Irish American heritage, it's easy to assume that if my ancestors um, chose to get on a different boat at a different time of year, I could potentially be an Irish Canadian. So based on this um, interesting and robust history that was uncovered between Ireland and Savannah, we built on top of that this very interesting um, economic development piece, right? So we have this firm foundation of a shared culture and history between Ireland and Savannah the very big Irish population in Savannah. So let's build on top of that firm foundation and economic development piece. So we formalized a partnership with County Wexford in Ireland in 2018. We called it a pilot program just to see what we could get done. Within 18 months, we had several things to celebrate by just focusing in and doing a number of trade missions and education and B2B meetings. We celebrated three business locations in Savannah we helped an Irish company get a signed um, distribution agreement with a distributor in Savannah. Um, we helped facilitate a campus, a new campus being um, opened from a Georgia company or Georgia school in Wexford. Um, we had over 100 business to business meetings facilitated and we have over 30 businesses and current talks for trade or investment back and forth. So, our time in Ireland has very much been fruitful, all thanks to our target country's efforts and all thanks to that shared interesting history and culture. All right, and that is my time. Um, that is my contact information on the screen. I'm Jesse Jenkins. You can reach me by email. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, and next, I will pass it back over to Miss Dina and you will get to hear from my friend, and colleague, Mr. John Petrino. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Jenkins. So um, our next speaker, as she said, is Mr. John Petrino, who is the Director of Business Development and International Marketing at the Georgia Ports Authority. He started his career in, in international logistics with the United States Line in 1984. And in 1988, he went to work for Marks which is the largest container shipping company in the world. And there he held numerous management positions through the US in sales, line management, and operations. He joined the Georgia Ports Authority in 2006 and currently serves as the Director of Business Development and International Marketing. He also currently serves as the Chairman of the Board of Directors of World Trade Center Savannah. So Mr. Petrino, I invite you to join us. Thank you very much, Dina. And first, uh, I want to thank you for having the Georgia Ports Authority giving us the opportunity to participate in your event today. Second, I'd like to congratulate Jesse on doing an outstanding job. Uh, as, you, as was mentioned, I'm not only an employee of the Georgia Ports Authority, but I'm also involved with World Trade Center Savannah. We have a terrific team there, and I'm just um, I'm just fascinated every time I, I work with them at, at their, their quality and the great job that they do. So Jesse, terrific job there today. Um, before I get into my presentation about the Port of Savannah and, and the Georgia ports, I wanna just say that I've, I've had the opportunity to, to come up to Montreal in the past, to work with the Cargo M Group, to work with some of the folks at the port there, uh, and, and I just loved it. And the, the folks were just so welcoming and so giving, I, I really cherished my time coming up there. It's not easy to get someone to leave Savannah in February to go to a, an icy, frigid place, but I, I did it happily a couple times. And, and so 
appreciate that. If my friends from uh, Cargo M and the port are online, uh, I'd like to just say so hello and uh, thank you for all your, your hospitality. Um, one thing is I'm not a native of Savannah, Georgia. I moved down here about 14 years ago after about 19 years with Marish Blind. And I can personally attest to what Jesse was talking about, about Georgia being a great state to do business. The quality of life along the coast is, is fantastic. I moved down here with uh, my family with four children in, uh, in, in 2006. And it was a difficult decision, but as soon as we came down here, I realized we made the right decision. The, uh, the affordability, the quality of life, all the amenities uh, in the Savannah area and coastal Georgia are just fantastic. If you've been down here to visit, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't been down here to visit, I definitely encourage you to come down here and see it for yourself, especially as the, the colder weather approaches. With that, I'm going to jump into my, my program. Try to advance the slides. Okay, here we go. So this is an outline of this, the state of Georgia. Uh, the Port Authority operates deep water terminals uh, in Savannah, Georgia. Those are our Garden City Terminal and our Ocean Terminal. Garden City Terminal handles containers and we own and operate those facilities. And about an hour and a half drive south from Savannah is Brunswick, Georgia, where we have our Colonel's Island Terminal, which handles automobiles and large uh, equipment. Our Mayor's Point facility, which handles um, bulk and break bulk cargo, forest products primarily and our East River Terminal there. East River Terminal is the only facility that we do not operate ourselves. Um, you're probably very familiar with uh, the Logistec Group. Those are our partners who operate the, our East River Terminal. So we're very, uh, very happy to have them with us. They're great partners for us and um, do a terrific job. They handle things like wood pellets and wood chips uh, being exported all over the world. And if you look in the top left, you'll see the Appalachian Regional Port. And what is that, you might be asking. And the Appalachian Regional Port is an inland port. It's a rail-served port, a railroad-served port uh, with service from Garden City Container Terminal, where we're actually taking containers, import and export to and from our facility and putting them on the train right on our terminal up to Northwest Georgia. Why do we do that? Well, it helps us take about 50,000 trucks a year off the highway that do not have to go through Atlanta. We're much closer to uh, Northwest Georgia. We're up near Alabama, Tennessee, and we have great opportunities to move cargo into those areas as well. Georgia ports, so what do we do? Well, we move cargo, that's true, but what are we really? We're an economic engine. We're part of that economic engine for the state of Georgia to try to grow and produce jobs. Over 440,000 jobs today uh, tied into the work that we do at the ports, directly and indirectly. There are about 1,300 people that work for the Port of Savannah for, or Georgia Ports Authority in Savannah and Brunswick and uh, up in uh, Northwest Georgia. And that does not count the longshoremen who are in the union who work on our terminals, the truck drivers, the railroad operators, and, and the warehouse and distribution folks that we, uh, that we, we also serve. Um, on this, I think uh, the other thing is we contribute to that, that, that state. And I'll talk a little bit about the state. We work, okay. Here's a, a picture of our Garden City Container, container Terminal. I always say it in acres. I say 1,300 acres, but today I'll say 544 hectares is our Garden City Container Terminal. This is where all the shipping lines that call the state of Georgia come into this for container business. It is the largest single container terminal in all of North America. We have 37 different weekly services bringing container ships in and out of our port. We can actually berth uh, eight to nine vessels at one time in our port, which is pretty amazing. If, you, if, you've, if you've been to a port, it, it's quite impressive. We are actually what's called an owner-operator terminal. So 
those 1,300 Georgia Ports Authority employees, they're all non-union, but they work side by side with members of the Longshoremen Union, International Longshoremen's Association. We have a great relationship with our friends with the ILA, with Customs and Border Protection, and all the other stakeholders involved in international transportation. A lot of people are familiar with the major ports in the US, Los Angeles and Long Beach, New York and New Jersey. But most people who are not involved heavily in the transportation and the logistics business are very surprised to see Savannah as the, the number three port uh, complex in the US in terms of container volume. Uh, just as an explanation, you'll see on this slide, fiscal year 2005 TEUs, and that TEU stands for 20 foot equivalent units. Those are 20 foot shipping containers and they're also 40 foot shipping containers and 45 uh, foot shipping containers. As we'll note here, our compounded annual growth rate from fiscal year 2005 to fiscal year 2020 was 6.4%. So we have a tremendous amount of growth. Savannah is a small city, about 250,000 people in our metropolitan statistical area, but we are one of the largest ports in the country, which will explain why Savannah. Uh, one thing that's a little bit different about Savannah, we have two on-dock rail facilities. The two major East Coast railroads in the US are the CSX and the Norfolk Southern. We build trains on a daily basis uh, for both the CSX and the Norfolk Southern on our Garden City terminal. We did about half a million uh, containers via rail last year. Rail represents about 20% of the container volumes coming and going through the port are moving by rail. Okay, so what does that leave us for uh, the balance of cargo moving by truck? So about 80% of our cargo moves through our facility uh, by truck. And every day we have about 12,000 trucks entering and leaving our facility on a daily basis. You'll see numbers on here, which I'll explain. A single move is if you're dropping off a container or if you're simply picking up a container. That was what we refer to as a single move. A double move, maybe you're dropping off an empty container uh, that an importer used, and then you're picking up a, a fully loaded uh, container to take back to that import. So we, we want to really keep the truck drivers moving. So we can do all that in under one hour, which by US standards is, is really uh, best in class. We operate Monday through Fridays, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we also offer uh, gates on Saturdays um, from eight to noon and one to five for our local, our local customers. I think if we think about uh, real estate, we think about uh, location, uh, where companies, it's location, location, location. So, Two things, uh, we move a lot of heavy cargo as exports from our ports. So we have heavy over the road weight limitations. We have great highway connectivity, great, great highway um, infrastructure in the state of Georgia. Interstate 16 is an east-west highway, which will take you up to Macon, Georgia, and then connect with Atlanta, Georgia. And Interstate 95, as you probably know, runs all the way from the state of Maine and Northeast US all the way down into South Florida. So you can actually be on these interstates within 10 minutes of leaving the Port of Savannah, which is pretty amazing in, in the US. We do this, we have a great uh, cooperation and partnership with the Georgia Department of Transportation. We do a long-term plan with them. Every two years we update a 10-year master plan. So we try to inform them well, what are our needs, what are our requirements moving forward. So that's location. These are some of the near port uh, industrial properties. You'll see companies like the Home Depot, like Target, like Ikea, Wayfair, um, Amazon is in here now too. There's a, a, a company that we have a great relationship with. I think your Durrell Industries, um, they came down to Savannah a few years ago and they've just expanded their presence in Savannah. So they're great partners with us. We also have another company out of, out of Montreal called Anatolia Tile. They recently opened up a, a, a US operation here in Savannah 
for distribution just within the last two years. So two great partners we have there. Looking at the state of Georgia, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but just about every major retailer uh, is represented here, major re exporters as well, manufacturers like Kia and Caterpillar and JCB equipment. We move a lot of, of, of food, importing and exporting poultry. We're the number one port for exporting poultry, chicken out of the United States as well. So just a sampling of some of the companies that do business here. And I mentioned location, location, location. We talk about the population. In our case, it's, it's, it's not a large population near Savannah, but we have great access and great reach to uh, you know, over 45% or within easy, easy reach. If you look at Atlanta and Charlotte and Orlando, Florida, which is not on here, but those major metropolitan areas are just about a four hour truck drive from the Port of Savannah with our, our great highway connectivity. And if we look further west into places like Memphis and Dallas and even Chicago, uh, we have great rail connectivity and we're spending a lot of money to increase our rail capacity to serve those areas outside of our area. We have a great customer service group I'm very proud of. It's a differentiator that helps us attract more business. Uh, that's part of my team as well. So I'm gonna move along rather quickly um, from here. Let's see, I lost my little arrow. Okay, we have on terminal expense ex and with, with uh, government agencies. Long-term investments, we're gonna invest about $3 billion in the next 10 years on increasing our capacity through the Port of Savannah. And that's on top of the 1 billion we spent in the previous years. I'm just gonna wrapping it up here quickly. Let's see if we can advance. Here we go. Sorry about that technical difficulties. Just summing it up, we're an economic engine for the state. Having a single terminal is very advantageous to our customers and the truckers who come here. The 37 weekly services, the rail on terminal, the near port distribution centers, the partnerships with the Longshoremen, Customs and Border Protection, Department of Agriculture, Food and Drug Administration, Fish and Wildlife. And if you hear those jets over, overhead, uh, Jesse talked about our military presence here in Savannah. Uh, that's uh, some of our, our Air Force uh, doing some training that are flying overhead. And really, I want to just say thank you for the opportunity. I hope you have some questions. I'm uh, eager to answer any questions you may have about doing business with the port or how we might be able to help. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, John and Jesse, for your interesting presentation. So it's now the questions period. So um, you're invited to write down your questions in the Q&A box. We've already received a few ones. If you haven't written your question, you can do so now. So I'll take the first question from Roberta Ann Kapelovic. Um, so she's asking, where is Savannah looking to increase its market and export? And is your strategic plan accessible? So good question. Um, strategic plan, uh, we don't have a, a, a written document that's our, our um, strategic plan. Uh, our, our, our focus plan is really looking at our, our operational uh, capacity today and where do we need our investments in, in, in 10 years. We really want to grow globally. Um, we've been very, very strong on the Trans-Pacific, the Asia market, uh, particularly with China, but we want to grow in, in other markets as well. More recently, we've grown our trade with uh, North Europe. We've increased our uh, trade with Central and South America, particularly on uh, perishables, food products, food items that traditionally may have moved through other uh, gateways in the mid-Atlantic, in Baltimore or Philadelphia or Wilmington, Delaware. So we do have a, a great emphasis on increasing our imports of perishable commodities so that we can serve our, 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 our friends and neighbors in the Southeast with fresh fruit, fresh produce, when the growing seasons are in, in the Southern Hemisphere and not in the Northern Hemisphere. I hope that helps. Thank you. And Jesse, did you have something else to add? 
Yeah, I would add um, that the Savannah Economic Development Authority, or CETA, who owns the World Trade Center license, launched into a pretty extensive strategic planning process a little over a year ago, or I guess a year and a half ago. Um, that is available online. Um, I'm happy to find the link and share it in some sort of follow-up from the program. But in terms of what kind of industries we're super interested in, um, we're quite diverse. I mean, truly, if someone has interest in going to the United States, this is more than likely a good soft place to land. And if it's not, we'll be honest about that too. If we know there's another place within a state that might make more sense for you, we'll connect you with the right people. Um, I think it's interesting to know also that the Savannah Economic Development Authority has a pretty compelling and quite developed uh, manufacturing park. So uh, large manufacturing manufacturers are kind of our unicorn companies, right? We would love to land those and get those um, skilled labor jobs and high wage jobs and large number of output type jobs and all of the investment that comes with something like a manufacturing center. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from Mathieu Charbonneau and he's asking, how do you see the COVID-19 situation affecting your business in the next season? I'll, I'll jump in there if you don't mind. Matthew, bonjour my friend. Um, Thank you for everything you've done. Uh, so with COVID, you know, on the operations side, internally, we have taken tremendous precautions to keep our people safe. Uh, one of the things we did prior to COVID is uh, supplying our customer service group with a web-based phone system, laptop, so that they can work remotely. Uh, our equipment operators, we're doing deep cleaning on all the equipment on a daily basis. Uh, things like that. Um, you know, when, when COVID first hit, it really, it, it came in on the, the tail end of Chinese New Year. So it, it really hurt our volumes in, in February and March and April. Um, our customers were, in, you know, really suffering. But we did see a, a fairly quick turnaround in, in, in May and June, July and August, where our, our import numbers in particular really grew. But how did it impact us with, you know, those first couple of months were really a, a struggle. I think um, our exports are not as strong as they were prior to, to COVID. Uh, and that's because of some of the economies where our exports are, are, are being sold to. Um, what are we doing internally? You know, we, we're monitoring. We've really cut back on our visitors. We've really cut back on our travel. We're doing more meetings like this via Zoom or Microsoft Teams. And you know we're, we're getting our message out that way, uh, much much more uh, via online. Um, another thing I think with COVID has really really increased our e-commerce business, not just the customers who are uh, traditional brick and mortar retailers, but they are doing more and more via e-commerce. And in the Savannah area, companies like uh, UPS and FedEx have opened up new facilities close to the port, close to the airport. To, to cater to and to handle that increased e-commerce business. So thank you for that question. Thank you. Um, so I have a question for, for Jesse. Uh, what is the first step for a company interesting in expanding in Savannah or Georgia? Great. Um, I think the first step is exactly what we've just done. And that is learning a little bit more about the region and kind of arming yourself with just enough information to be dangerous, right? And hold a conversation um, and building those relationships and finding a contact who, who can be your concierge and help you get um, established in the state. So I think today is a great first step and knowing to, you can reach out to myself and my team or John and his team, and we can really help um, develop those conversations and explore that with a company if they're interested. Thank you very much. And uh, one more last question for John. So the population of the Savannah Metropolitan Statistical Area is very low compared with other major container port cities. So to what uh, do you attribute the Port of Savannah's success in this area? Sure, well, that's a great question. Thank you for asking it. I, I, I think, you know, our, our sales approach, um, going back long before I came to the port, you know, going back about 25 years ago, the Port Authority recognized that while they might generate their revenue from the shipping lines, it's the actual exporters and importers who are making those decisions on where to move their products from. 
So while we may be a, a, a small, you know, town or a small city um, from a population standpoint, we have solicited business from the companies like Walmart, from Target, Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, Ikea, Heineken, um, Anatolia Tile. If they will build uh, distribution centers near our port, we know that the ships will come to our port. We've got a great, as Jesse talked earlier about the workforce, we've got a tremendous workforce here. Uh, being part of the number one state for doing business, uh, working with the Department of Economic Development, we've been able to grow business that are already here and to attract new business. So by going out and, and, and talking with and engaging with the ultimate customers and saying, why Savannah? This is what we can do different. And we believe better than how you've done it in the past. And things like the Panama Canal expansion and larger vessels coming in and continued investment in our infrastructure to handle those larger vessels. That's all played a, a key role in our ability to, to, to grow our container volume. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, we are now at the end of the questions period. So thank you again, Jesse and, and John for your excellent presentation and discussion and, and joining us today. Uh, it was a pleasure having you here. And thanks as well to all the participants uh, for, for listening and for, uh, for asking all their questions. Um, and as a reminder, I will send uh, everyone a follow-up email tomorrow. Uh, and uh, so you will also have in, the, in these emails the contact information for if you want to reach out to Jesse or, or to John. Um, and once again, I invite you to complete the survey that will be sent to you. It will pop up uh, when you, you close, um, when you leave the meeting. I will be very appreciated to get her, you know, if, you, if you'd like, if you like this webinar and to see if you, you'll be interested in covering other topics. Uh, we will also make the video recording available on our website uh, this week and as well as on, on our YouTube channel. So if you feel free if you'd like uh, to watch it again or to share it with other people. Also, stay tuned for our next Rencontre Internationale des Jardins coming up in two weeks at the same date. Um, then the, where we will be discussing the American elections with John Parisella. So on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce of Metropolitan Montreal, I wish you all a good day and hope to see you at our next event. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.